Hey everybody, it's me, Kendra T, the SLP. I wanted to do a quick video to show people how to set up and do a virtual IEP meeting. I've been getting a lot of questions about that, so here we are. So the first thing you want to do is open up your uh, web browser. I use Google Chrome. Um, and this same step applies for a Zoom meeting or a Google Meet meeting, depending on what you and your school district or your company are using to meet virtually. But you're gonna go to your calendar. So when you're in the Google Chrome uh, extension, let me move this camera here. When you open up Google Chrome, up here in the top right corner is that little tic-tac-toe board. <laughs> and that's how you get to Google Apps that you have plugged into to your system. So you open up the calendar, there's the calendar app, and then you'll get this one right here. Boom, 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 okay? So you click on when you want that meeting to start. Let's go for Wednesday at two, Wednesday, April 8th at two. And I like to do the more options option. And I'm gonna put in test student meeting and then it already has in the day and the time sometimes the google calendar re will pre-fill all day but who wants to be in an all-day meeting not me so you make sure that you have the date and just the time you know allotment that you have um if you are doing conferencing as you know you are because that's what this video is for <laughs> then you will click here where it says add conferencing um, for me, I'm using my personal computer, so I have Hangouts tied in. But if you were, say, using your school's uh, computer or your Google profile on your school account and they were tied in with the G Suite, you would have Google Meets show up here. If you had downloaded the Zoom app and had that tied in and linked to your Google Chrome prof profile, it'd show up here. But basically, whatever conferencing uh, medium that you are using when you click on add conferencing it'll show up here so you select select it and once you do that if you were using Google meets it would generate a meeting ID number and it would generate um, a, a a phone number a special phone number because sometimes you'll have parents and participants who don't want to be on camera they don't want to they don't they don't have a working camera so they want to participate by phone. So you can get a special phone number with the PIN number and uh, that would show up right here in this spot, okay? And then in the description, in the description, I usually add some instructions for how to dial in. I usually put a note in here that Google Voice or um, this virtual platform, whichever one you're using, Zoom or Google Voice, can be done on phone or video conference okay so i have that note because when people hear virtual meeting if they're not familiar with it they've never done it before then they don't know they might you know they don't know what it means so i do have an explanation that this can be done in phone or video conference and y'all know i copy and paste so i have a statement somewhere in my stash of templates that i would copy and paste into this invitation and it says it can be done by phone or video conference. And then I have instructions for how to dial in for phone. You would use the special number that would be generated right here and then use the PIN number and dial in. And I would give that to the parents if they just insisted on doing a phone conference. I would text it to them. Hey, here's the special dial in number for you to use and the PIN number when it's time for the meeting. And so I have those instructions here and I remind them in the instructions that being on the phone means you can hear everything and speak, of course, but not see anything, okay? The presentation. So then I also have instructions for by video. And I have the instruction that you click on the link to the meeting ID or the, the code that will be right here to join the video, simple as that. So when they get the invitation in their email, they will have all those links in that email and all they have to do is click on the one that they want to use um when i have instructions for video i also remind them that you can hear and see okay but you also can mute your camera if you mute your camera then you can see everything right without being seen <laughs> without being Come on now, I'm typing on the spot. Scene. <laughs> All 
All right, so that gives a little bit of the anonymity that a parent might be seeking. Uh, they'll be able to see the documents that you're presenting, but they won't be on camera looking puzzled because those documents can be confusing, right? Or boring. So they, they don't want to be caught on camera like, Okay, so now you have put in the details of the when the meeting is, the where the meeting is, anywhere you want it to be, as long as you have a device. Uh -huh. And then you've put in some directions for how to join the meeting. Don't forget to add your guest. Okay, this is what makes it different than say, uh, when you do your preview, you, how you do your IEP meetings where you send home the notice, because here you need the parent's email address. So when you are, talking to the parents to say, hey, I need to set this meeting up. I'm looking at this date and this time. What's your availability? Cool. Let me get your email address. And then you include them in the guest list, okay? So you put all of their emails here in this guest list, and then you click save. And when you click save, boom, it'll send that out to everyone, and they will have it on their calendar, and they will have those links to join the meeting. All right? So now, when it's time for you to do your meeting, how do you do a meeting virtually? Here you go. Okay. So again, I am doing this presentation in Zoom, but Zoom and Google Meet, um, both of what I'm familiar with, and that's what I'm speaking to, have very similar platforms. You are going to be sharing your screen. Zoom causes a uh, share screen, and Meet calls it pre presenting something. All right. So let's pretend I am here in the meeting and it's me, and then I have my other participants here and everyone's joined in. First thing I wanna do is announce who all is here. Take like a little roll call, you know? And then I like to say the objective of the meeting. Today, we are reviewing the IEP for this student and then we're gonna, go, we're gonna review that document and then we're gonna review the prior written notices. The overall point is that you are telling them what you're reviewing. Okay, IEP team, I am going to start sharing and showing you the document. Okay, here in Zoom, the menu at the bottom, right there in the middle, boom, boom, it says share screen. Okay, and then it wants you to choose exactly what do you mean by share your screen? Do you want to share your Google Chrome tab or your desktop in this case, I'm going to say I want to share my desktop because I have saved the document uh, to my desktop that I'm sharing. So I selected it. See how you can choose what you want to what you want to share. Share the desktop. Share. <laughs> I said share so many times. All right. Now you should be able to see my desktop. Now you want to make sure that you clear off your desktop before you start your meeting. If you're going to be sharing it, you're going to put it all out there people are gonna see it. So hide other student files and um, you know personal pictures if you don't want those to, to show. And okay, everyone, IEP team, this is the, doc, this is the IEP we're reviewing. <laughs> A recipe for pot pie that I made. So you're gonna go through your IEP, you're gonna talk about it, the points you all at this point know how to do an IEP meeting. Uh, this virtual IEP meeting is a result of the crazy pandemic shut, uh, school shutdown that we're in right now, right? Um, but you know what, secretly though, I'm hoping we can do this moving forward because the virtual IEP meetings are bomb, okay? Like, as a person who travels around from school to school and um, you know has to often pull together these team members, it is so much more convenient. Parents are more available and they could be more available because the schools are shut down. But you know, you have parents who work and parents who work from home. So um, it can be just more convenient to do these meetings this way. So now I have shared my document. Now I'm going to have to stop sharing so that I can share something different. So now I've unshared, okay? And you saw where I clicked the stop share button, right? Okay. Um, now I will open up the, um, the database where we do our documentation and I will start sharing that screen. So again, you are telling uh, people that you are sharing something else. So again, uh, share the screen. And you're gonna choose what you're gonna share. In this case, I'm going to share my Google Chrome profile because I am showing the meeting participants 
the documentation that I have entered into the ECATS system. Okay, and that is on my Google Chrome. So now I'm sharing that. That, my friends, is how you do a virtual IEP meeting using Zoom. Now I will say, Zoom and Google Meets are not that much different, okay? Again, you will schedule your virtual IEP meetings the same way using Google Calendar. If you use Google Calendar, um, whether you're using Zoom or Meet, you will schedule that meeting in your calendar the same way by selecting conferencing and getting IDs and, and special phone numbers and sending out the invitation to the emails, okay? All right, so here we are, and now you're seeing my screen as if I was using Google Meet to do this IEP meeting, okay? When I tap on the screen, I get a menu down here at the bottom. This microphone is how you turn off your microphone just to mute yourself. This camera is how you turn off your camera to mute your face. The red hang up phone, an old school phone looking thing is to hang up the meeting. And then right here far to the left is the present now button. This is the button that you would push to start showing things on your screen, to present your IEP draft documents and to present your, um, your, your, your web browser to show your ECATS documents, okay? So they're both very similar. They both have uh, a chat box feature and Google Meet, it's right here. It looks like a text messaging icon, right, on your phone. And then here you have the little people icon and this shows you who all is in the meeting. And then there's the chat because you have some people who wanna mute their microphone, but they still wanna say something every now and again. So you might find that they'll chat. And then I'm gonna go back to my Zoom browser here and show you the same types of menu features here on the Zoom browser. So here at the bottom, there's your mute the microphone where you can mute yourself. And that way, muting yourself or asking your meeting participants is good because then you won't hear all their background noise, okay? Um, stopping the video for Zoom. Stopping the video means basically muting the, the video. So that means that you will no longer be able to see the person, see? But you can still hear me, right? Here I come, I'm back. All right, manage participants down here at the bottom. This is what show. This is what shows you who all is in the meeting, okay? And if you are the host and you started this meeting, you can go ahead and mute all of them, you know? You don't have to ask them to do it. You could just do it for them. I don't think you have that type of power in Google Meet. All right, so again, there's a screen share button in the middle and you can choose what you, you know, you have some options for what you wanna share. And then here's the chat feature, similar to Google Meet. Here in Zoom, you would have the chat over here on the side. Okay, so now you have just gotten a crash course <laughs> in how to do your IP meetings virtually, how to schedule them, how to do them, including presenting and showing paperwork and documentation. And I believe I gave you some tips on how to process and go through the meeting and how you should explain things as you're doing them to the participants and you always want to confirm that they can see things okay thanks a lot for watching i hope you learned something let me know in the comments thank you hala koala that's a little something i'm trying to make stick <laughs>